sit down videos just always seem so official and like unnecessarily awkward um but we're gonna get over it today we're gonna be talking about one of my favorite things in the recent years but i would say like specifically like recent year i've just been obsessed and that thing is listening to podcasts now i know i'm not claiming that i discovered podcasts and that they're very niche and no one <laughs> listens to them but i would say it's a smaller proportion of people maybe it's just like a character thing whether you like it or not but it's like you know everyone likes music for example but podcasts aren't everyone cup everyone's cup of tea that is what people say but in my opinion my humble opinion i think people just find it a bit overwhelming like the whole world of podcasts may seem like a lot <laughs> at times and this is where i come in i am gonna give you my podcast recommendations but i would be doing a very poor job at being like a youtuber if i wouldn't self-promote here and in case you don't know i have my own podcast it's called heartfelt i talk about all things ranging from gen z culture mental health self-development brain dumps just everything that's on my mind packed into a cute little episode with a bow on it so go give it a listen and also if you feel like it you can follow it on instagram it's at heartful pod also i forgot to say if you have any podcast recommendations do give them away in the comments like your number one podcast that you listen to every episode and i made it easier for you and i divided this video and this list into categories so like if you're only interested in a specific one then you can jump ahead so let's just get right into it category number one so it's basically just podcasts by my favorite content creators so these are podcasts that i listen to because i love the person who makes them basically another way to put it is just intelligent well-spoken women who i love and i just am very interested and curious about their lives and whatever they have to say even if it's just their shopping list i literally will listen to them so number one is at lexi by lexi lombard i discovered her podcast actually because i think when she started it so many people that i followed other content creators like reposted her podcast and i was just like mm, i guess i'll give it a listen don't know this girl and i fell in love from episode one in her podcast she kind of spends half of the time giving like life updates and generally talking about how she's been feeling recently blah 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 those kinds of things and the other half answering her listeners questions on like various various topics there are literally no limits sometimes people will ask her about like styling advice or her favorite color of nail polish and sometimes people will ask her like how to deal with trauma and grief and you know she goes she dives into it all this podcast is probably like one of my favorites in definitely top three if not top one not sure I don't know what is it about it specifically. I think it's just her personality. To me, Lexi comes across as like a very high energy, bubbly, like uplifting personality or like persona, but also she's very intelligent and outspoken and sincere. And I think the way she talks about certain like issues or topics is not very obvious. And it really feels like she thinks through the things that she's going to say rather than just like repeating stereotypical answers that you may expect from people like how to deal with this. And, you know, sometimes I feel like we all hear the same answer just given by different people, but she really gives it a thought and gives her sincere advice on topics. It's weird because I think on one hand, it may seem like she's not really relatable because, you know, she has like half a million on YouTube. She lives in LA, goes to the beach every Friday which is probably not something like a lot of us can relate to. But on the other hand, there is something so relatable about her and the things she say and the emotions she's going through and how she describes them in a particular way that I just, I find it very, very relaxing and relatable in that sense. So yeah, big love for Lexi. Don't think she'll ever watch this, but God, I love this woman. The next one I want to talk about is Anything Goes by Emma Chamberlain. I don't think I need to introduce Emma to anyone, but I still want to read her kind of like bio. I don't know how it's called. Emma prefers to share her thoughts with a microphone rather than a physical human being, so thank God she has a podcast. Recorded from the comfort of her bed, Emma talks at length about whatever is on her mind every week. Sometimes philosophy, sometimes a random story from 10 years ago, sometimes advice, and sometimes nothing at all. You never know what you're going to get, but that's what keeps it interesting. Pretty much says it all. I mean, Emma is the it girl of 2020s, in my opinion, and probably the rest of the world as well. I think it's been really interesting for all of us, including me, to see kind of her rise to fame from this very relatable, down-to-earth Gen Zer that she is to this widely recognized, basically, celebrity at this point and seeing how she kind of still manages to keep her relatability in a way. Like, not on every level, for sure. Like, 
there is definitely a disparity between how she used to live her life and how she does now, which is natural. And this is not to say that's anything negative. That's, I think, what people love about her is, is that she kind of man- managed to maintain her relatability. And her podcast is also a very nice addition for, you know, people who like her YouTube channel, but she doesn't post her that often anymore. And even if she posts, I feel like on her podcast, she's much more open and sincere and just filters herself less. I feel like she probably feels le- less pressure to say certain things than she does on her YouTube channel. I think that's quite like understandable just because you're not, she doesn't have a camera in her face and she goes on those like hour long rambles about her unpopular opinions or just anything basically as I read it to you. Um, sometimes I must say like I find her, some of the things she say a bit weird or like a little annoying, but I think that's just like natural and just my comment on it but overall i really like her podcast episode and i would say i listen to most of them and the last podcast on this category is welcome to paradise by sophia kelly and i'll read you the bio what's really going on honestly who knows i'm sophia a 24 year old creative entrepreneur etc and i'm here to explore and talk about it all welcome to paradise baby I think the synopsis really says it all about like what kind of person Sofia is. Maybe some of you recognize her from her Instagram. I think she has like 100k there. This is how I found her. I think she gained a lot of popularity during quarantine. A lot of people like when she was posting a lot of like wellness content, recipes, kind of her cute outfits. She's a very, very aesthetic LA girl. And in the same way that I feel about Lexi as in like she talks about things in a sincere way and talks about things that are not that obvious and doesn't repeat just other people's thoughts. You can tell that what she says in the podcast is her own genuine thoughts produced in her brain. I just love Sophia because she's so chaotic, just like the synopsis. She's so chaotic and like sometimes her episodes are just like, I'm just like, where did they come from again? Like, what are you even talking about? And sometimes she'll just say something so random. But I think that's the unpredictability is what I love about her in a way. I think she makes her own kind of aesthetic with that. Like she'll just talk about daddy issues and being a Lana Del Rey stand in one episode and on the other she'll talk about the difference between motivation and discipline and on the other like she'll read out love letters from her past boyfriends. I just personally love her aesthetic and her vibe. Now we're moving on to the next category which is mental health slash spirituality slash self-development. So the first one which is, again, one of my favorites, is Goes Without Saying by Sefi and Wing. The way I would describe their podcast is just kind of mental health-related discussions because both of them are quite vocal about their own mental health struggles. But what they do very well is have an addition of this Gen Z-specific culture things in the background. So, for example, talking about fear of missing out, something that's quite like a general thing, but also including be real into it, you know, like some a new app that's just like popping off. I sound like a grandma, I know. The conversations always really feel fresh and like they know what's going on and it it just feels very current and modern and relatable. This is the first podcast on this list that is not just like a one-person show or one man, one woman show, but a conversation between two best friends. I think personally, just a side note, I prefer podcasts done by like one person just because I feel like the person can be A, more honest about what they're saying and their opinions and you have like this kind of like uninterrupted flow, whereas conversations between people can often, like the dynamic can be a little bit off. But I think Sefi and Wing have this amazing, incredible dynamic. You can tell that they're really, truly best friends outside of the recording studio and that they are very open and vulnerable with each other and they just kind of it's just kind of like they decide to share a snippet of their conversations going on between them with us. The second podcast under this category category is Smoke Sesh by Hannah Merlin. Basically the big theme of this podcast is just her smoking weed because I believe she lives in California or basically somewhere where it's legal. But this is definitely not like the reason for which I listen to her. I think it definitely is something about the her podcast that distinguishes her amongst many others, but it's also I just really find whatever she has to say interesting. And each podcast episode, which are usually very long, I would say they range from like 40 minutes to two hours, like the most recent one, which I, as I said, love personally. Again, similar to Lexi, first half of the episode, she kind of talks about her life, what she's recently been going through. And the second one, she answers questions and gives advice. Personality wise, she's very chill and unapologetic, sometimes says things that can be found outrageous by some people, but like, again, like her for that, especially since so many people, I feel like, go with the grain. She's definitely not a person that does that. She also doesn't stray away from any topics. Like she'll talk in depth about her UTI application procedure, body hair, but also at the same time, like her struggles with depression or 
abortion she intertwines a lot of spirituality into whatever she's talking about like some new moon rituals she's basically a witch i love her and i think a lot of you would like her as well so my next recommendation is insides anna's mind by anna archer and her podcast she just again talks about her life her struggles her past traumas past experiences that shaped who she is mental health body image, a lot of those topics. I believe that she's quite like a big person in the fitness community who just got famous during quarantine. I discovered Anna very randomly through like some podcast recommendations, but like she really kind of like gripped me with what she was saying just because she was talking about, I think in the episode that I listened to, she was just talking about her like past struggles with eating disorder. That's also a topic that like is quite frequent throughout her episodes just because she struggled with it for many years and as a person who struggled like to some extent with um food and body image in the past as we probably a lot of us have i find her way of talking about it as well as recovery very very relatable and very genuine and like she just says facts i just hate when people talk about certain topics in the same way like you hear it all the time and you're just so bored with it like people i feel like a lot of people don't add anything interesting to many discussions like many things have been said but she does include her personal take on things she does include concrete advice and she's very again she's my age or even younger i guess but she kind of like feels like an older sister in that terms like she's very very intelligent and has a lot of things figured out at such a young age and yeah just again she has this very like comforting uplifting presence something about her it keeps me wanting to listen to her whatever podcast episode she puts out so big recommendation the next one also deserves like a star of honor like i love all these podcasts and i listen to them quite frequently but this podcast that I'm about to talk about, like I listen to every single episode that comes out basically, Reset with Liz Tran. Liz Tran is an executive coach to CEOs and founders of tech companies. She attributes her success to her spiritual practice that is based in mindfulness and Buddhism. In this podcast, she combines spiritual lessons with professional advice to help you live your authentic, connected and meaningful life. On one hand, you may say that this is another one of those like spirituality podcasts and like there's a lot of them and not much can be added to the discussion, but I... What I really truly love about Liz is that she does combine those two things as in like a very like corporate technical analytical background brain kind of thing. Like she's a very entrepreneurial, has a very entrepreneurial spirit. And at the same time, I love how humanely she approaches it and how she makes so much space for spirituality in that sphere of her life, like her professional life, which I think a lot of people wouldn't mix or they would assume that someone who is a CEO or works in tech, like they're not going to be your go-to spiritual girly. It's also a good listen for those people who don't get spirituality in a way and want to get into it, but are still a bit skeptical. Anytime she brings it up, it's just in a very concrete, factual manner. And she's just somehow able to convince me into whatever she's going to say. I, I always think her words are very wise and she's also very inspiring on whatever she does so and the last podcast in this category is the lily pod by linia shanti i hope i read it correctly welcome to the lily pod the podcast that seeks to explore the layers of social conditioning in connection to gender sexuality political wokeness relationships and identity settle in and get cozy as we dive into the facts of facets of intersectional feminism the polarity of modern politics and learning to question literally everything I've mentioned this podcast in my internalized male gaze episode, which was basically kind of inspired by the Lily Pod. The thing that stands out to me about this podcast in, in particular is that Linnea, I don't, I've never heard this name before, so I'm like, I'm scared that I'm like mispronouncing it all the time. But Linnea talks about topics that I feel like they do not get enough airtime again, like they're not talked about enough, and I often find her discussions very novel. I learn a lot from whatever she decides to talk about because these are very valid topics that I just feel like I do not have enough knowledge about and I think we're definitely not being educated about them enough. Like, how does heteronormativity affect us in our daily life? How do we perceive gender and sexuality? Those kinds of things. Her discussions are very varied and I just find them really genuinely like interesting and educational. And I think when I discovered this podcast, I listened to like 10 episodes in two days probably um because there were quite a lot um but they're also on the shorter side in case you were wondering now moving on i have two podcasts from like the general health category they're not necessarily about mental health maybe a bit more on the like physical health side so the first one is zoe science and nutrition by jonathan wolf basically these are these like scientific very well researched discussions or more of like interviews with experts on particular topics for example like are meat and dairy alternatives 
good for you or are, can spices improve our health? Like things that are a bit less obvious. And all the episodes are very like scientific, well-researched and backed up by science. And I believe that he always links like resources and whatever whatever he quotes from, he links those sources in the podcast episode. I like that he starts each episode with like a bunch of rapid fire questions to the expert, like are carbs bad for you? Can you gain weight by eating carbs? Can you lose weight by eating carbs? Like these kinds of things. And then he dives deep deep into it and, and asks just a lot of questions that are probably on a lot of our minds to experts in that particular area sphere. I don't know how to call that. And the second one that I would like to recommend in this category is Delicious Ways to Feel Better by Ella Mills. Ella Mills, the author of the podcast, I've been like, I've known her for a while. I think she has her own like restaurant in London. She has her own food blog. She's in that kind of like eating well sphere. But I would say that on the podcast specifically, she just has like general health slash wellness related discussions, again, with experts, which I think when it comes to any health kind of related podcast is very important to have experts on topics that she talks about range from like intermittent fasting sleep caffeine like anything that you can think about um related to health eating and wellness because of how popular she is and how you know well known she is i guess in those in that sphere she is able to bring on pretty like famous guests i would say so like michael Pollan, like the author of how to change your mind i've heard about him before so it's really cool to kind of have these people engage in a conversation with her And besides it being just, again, informational, interesting to me, I find Ella a very, like, smiley, warm person. And I think I would get along if I were to ever meet her. Yeah, she seems really, really sweet and genuine. Moving on to three kind of, like, educational podcasts that you can definitely learn something from. I mean, you can learn something from all of these, but specifically knowledge-related ones. The way I describe some things are just... I question that every single day. The first one on this list also gets a golden star for me, (laughs) a badge of honor, and that is The Financial Feminist by Tori Dunlap. I think when I, when this popped up in my Spotify recommendations, because I believe again, this is how I found it, um, I was very like quite skeptical just because I have zero interest in finance and I, it's just not very, a lot of finance related podcasts are just plainly boring and I don't find them interesting at all. But it turned out to be a very welcoming, inclusive, and well-informed space in which Tori, the creator of the podcast, not only talks about like personal finances and investing and things like that, she also brings on a lot of guests and she has these like interviews with them, which go like well beyond just money and finances. Like she talks about career development and travel, misogyny, a lot of things. And it's just kind of hard to put her podcast into a box I would say I I would say I particularly like the interview episodes much more just because she she has them with these like I would say semi-famous people for example like the singer of Pentatonix or the girl who voiced Kim Possible like people you if I mentioned them you probably like recognize or know that this is kind of like a well-known character but you cannot remember the names and like basically those kind of people and it's funny because like these are as again like these are people that I do not have any particular interest in but Tori is such a good interviewer and she gives so much respect and space and asks such like accurate questions in her interviews and she's you can tell she's a really good listener as well and it's just really interesting to hear that kind of dynamic I would say I look up to her and I find her very very inspiring and just her approach to not only like finances, but just life and career. And she always takes matters into her own hands, which I love, big, big love for this podcast. The next one is Today in Focus by The Guardian. The way I would describe Today in Focus is just like a news podcast, but made much more humane and personal. So I used to listen to like BBC Global News every single day when I was in high school, but I just don't like listening to or reading the news because it's just flashy headlines that grab your attention. You focus on one for like maybe five minutes and move on to the next one and you don't really retain any information whereas what I love about this podcast particular in particular is that it picks apart it picks just one topic for its whole entire like 30 to an hour long episode and dives deep into it and also includes storytelling from the people that are directly affected by a given situation for example a recent episode which I so well remember just because again like the way it's structured the way it is done makes you makes these stories stick with you and it was about how girls who are now living under Taliban rule in Afghanistan are kind of defying their ban on education for girls at a certain age it included like their confessions and it was very insightful and it really gave the proper respect to the situation rather than just being like this is what is happening 
and this is like our five sentences on it so as a person who like wants to stay informed wants to stay educated on those topics but also hates just reading plain mainstream news this podcast is perfect and the last one on this list is planet money by npr i would say that it's like economics made interesting and fun actually but i also would add that just the episodes often go beyond like the scope of just economics per se. I mean, economics are kind of like related to everything. But for example, some of their episodes are like really, really niche, but interesting for that particular reason. For example, they will tell a story of someone who trades truffles and how, and they will try to answer the question of why are truffles so valuable. Very interesting topics, bite size, like 20, 30 minutes. You'll definitely learn something fun, maybe not the mainstream news, but it's also, I think it covers both kind of, but it's, I think it's a very good podcast for like people who are a bit on the nerdy side. I am sometimes as well. Um, and I just like really enjoy some episodes, even though I don't listen to most of them just because there, there are so many. We have last two categories to go. I promise we're close to the end. The next two podcasts I have are, I guess would fall under like the love, romance, sex category. The first one is Whinge with Gabby and Hannah. It's like W Hinge because Hinge is a dating app for those of you that don't know. And this is the shortest podcast description that I found and it's just two best friends whining about their Hinge dates. The episodes are not that very frequent but they're whenever they do post Gabby and Hannah, it's, it's so entertaining. They basically just retell their dating stories from real life. It's hilarious, it's honest and very entertaining for sure. Like I eat their episodes up <laughs> um but it also kind of makes you lose faith in men a little bit whenever i listen to them like their their stories because they give so much detail i'm just kind of like what is happening but yeah the hosts are amazing they have very good presence and are very charismatic i would say and very very funny and intelligent so and the second one under that kind of category is facts given by florence and reed and their bio is Welcome to our podcast where we talk about sex, relationships, and body positivity with no filter, no censor, and with absolutely no fucks given. I think Florence and Reed have been podcasting since like 2018, so you can have you have so many episodes to go back to if you get into it, which was what I have done when I firstly discovered their podcast. I think personally their podcast is one of the most open-minded and non-judgmental spaces on the internet I have found. When I say they do not stray away from any topic i mean any topic they will talk about anything and that is primarily i would say related to sex but also just relationship body image love i love how this podcast can both help you learn something definitely like they have a lot of knowledge but it also help to dissolve stigma around many topics that are being shamed or just stigmatized and the last but definitely not least podcasts that i want to talk about i kind of didn't have a category for them just because they're own they're their own kind of brand the first one is culture club by jasmine and maggie for someone like me who doesn't use instagram that much or social media in general i don't have a tiktok i feel like i'm often out of out of the loop with all these like gossip celebrity information current affairs kind of things so for me culture club is this very fun entertaining and light kind of curated feed of those celebrity pop culture news but i appreciate that their episodes also go kind of beyond just the headlines and they often have quite like a sensitive discussion around certain topics and they talk about important things and go beyond headlines that's what i'm trying to say and yeah i just always wait for their episodes whenever they come out i don't know their podcast just always makes me aware that there's so much going on in like this celebrity slash pop culture world that i'm just not aware of and I guess these aren't necessarily the most important information that you need to know. But it's also like I'm a 20-something Gen Z. Like, I, I am curious. I want to know the tea, all the gossip. I want to be in the loop. And this is the perfect way of doing so without kind of having to go through all these things myself by having, for example, like Instagram and going up to people like Insta stories and reading the infographics. It's just a much more pleasant content to consume, I would say. And we've reached the last position of this, on this list and it's the podcast Sounds Like a Cult. The premise is simple and basically in each episode the hosts pick a different modern day cult, like something that's not officially a cult but something that they consider to be a cult for reasons they list out in the episode. And they talk about like the culty aspect of that thing 
often with like an expert on this topic or like a member of it. So for example, they had a really, really good episode about the cult of academia, which I would definitely listen to all of you who feel like they just have been in the educational bubble for maybe a bit too long. And they got a professor to talk on this podcast. So it was really, really fun. Um, it's not too serious, but it's also like really highlights just how culty some groups are and we don't even realize it like the kardashian stands or like the cult of minimalism or the cult of veganism or the cult of instagram therapists there's just a bunch of those and very very entertaining podcast and very well researched as well i literally consumed like their episodes as like good reality tv same with like culture club love them both okay so we've reached the end of this list i i feel like almost everyone would be able to find something a little something for them in this list um obviously it's a lot and it can be a little overwhelming but just you know if you want to try maybe just pick one and start listening to one episode but i just have so much love for podcasts like they keep me so entertained and educated on all of topics and it's an entertainment but in a healthier way like a more productive way it feels like so that is everything for this video i know it was a very long one and if you're still here then all my love goes for you um and yeah i'll talk to you in the next one Bye.